Personal Log, Captain William Stryker. I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it with my own eyes. A man was brought in today who could instantly teleport from one location to another. Imagine the military potential of this ability. And what if there are others with even greater powers? A strike force composed of mutants could accomplish missions that no human squad could even hope to attempt. Personal Log, Captain William Stryker. I'm pushing forward with assembling my squad of mutants. High Command is dubious, but they're willing to let me run with it for a few more months. Once they see the team in action, I'm sure I'll have their full confidence. Along that line, I just received word of two brothers who are mutants. Both have regenerative powers and one of them has retractable bone claws. Unfortunately, they're hot-tempered. One of them killed a commanding officer. But there's potential here, so I'm going to see if they can be of use. Personal Log, Captain William Stryker. The mission to Angola was a success. The indigenous personnel were reluctant to reveal the location of the mineral. But in the end, we got what we came for. There was some collateral damage. A military advisor paid the ultimate price in service to her country. Also, a team member left due to combat fatigue. He'll be kept under surveillance for possible activation at a later date. Personal Log, Captain William Stryker. I just read the surveillance reports on former members of Team X. It breaks my heart to see what depths these men have sunk into. Wraith is running a gym, Dukes has an eating disorder, and Barnell works at a carnival. Perhaps the most pitiful of all is Logan. He had such potential, and now it's all going to waste while he hides in the wilderness. Personal Log, Captain William Stryker. Our top scientific minds would have us believe that the appearance of Homo Superior is little more than an aberration. But what if they're wrong? What if the number of mutants continues to increase? And what if they become even more powerful, to the point where they determine we're no longer necessary? The incident with the team in Angola has shown me that mutants are incapable of being trusted. We humans must take steps to protect ourselves. Personal Log, Dr. Abraham Cornelius. How can they expect me to complete my work when my hands are tied by so many rules and regulations? I'm on the verge of a revolutionary breakthrough, and they're worried about human rights. Well, the test subjects are not humans. They're mutants. Legally, they have no rights. Personal Log, First Entry, Dr. Carol Frost. I hadn't realized how large the Weapon X facility was when I first interviewed here. They gave me a tour today, and I discovered that 90% of it's underground. The place is huge. The people here are very skilled, and the equipment is top of the line. Some of it I didn't even know existed. I also met Captain Stryker for the first time. Unlike Dr. Cornelius, who's always struck me as a bit of a cold fish. Captain Stryker seems to genuinely care about what we're doing and how our work can benefit mankind. Personal Log, Dr. Carol Frost. A test subject was brought in to me today. He spoke, which is incredible considering the amount of sedatives he was given. It was difficult to understand him, but it sounded as if he wasn't a volunteer. He's a prisoner. If that's true, then I need to rethink what I'm doing here at Weapon X. Personal Log. Dr. Carol Frost. After getting no response from Dr. Cornelius about my growing belief that the test subjects are prisoners, I spoke with Captain Stryker. He showed a side of himself I've never seen before. There was a cold anger there, an unreasoning hatred of mutants that I didn't realize existed. While he never came out and said it, I got the feeling that if I brought up the subject again, more than just my job would be terminated. From now on, I have to be careful about what I say. Personal Log, Dr. Carol Frost. I know it was wrong, but I had to search Cornelius' office to find out what's really going on at Weapon X. I discovered that the doctor's work is based on research done by Dr. Nathaniel Essex, a man who joined the project back when it started at the end of World War II. The man was a genius. His theories were radical, way beyond the thinking of that time. 
I wonder what Captain Stryker would say if he found out that everything Cornelius has done is really the work of another man. Meeting Surveillance. Authorized by Dr. Abraham Cornelius. Adamantium. Are you certain such a metal even exists? It's extremely rare, but yes. Dr. McLean's notes were quite clear. Bonding that metal to bone must be painful. Very much so. But more importantly, the process damages all the surrounding tissue. Sounds like it would kill a normal man. Indeed it would. But who says we need to use a normal man? Personal Log, Dr. Abraham Cornelius. Today, I propose that Logan, a former member of Team X, would make an excellent subject for the adamantium bonding process. His mental ability to withstand pain, combined with his mutant healing ability, gives him a more than 30% chance of surviving. Captain Stryker agreed, and will see to it that Logan is brought to the Weapon X facility. Personal Log, David Nord. Captain Stryker is having me join him on a trip to see Logan. After all this time, why contact that has been? Africa kind of said it all. But it's not my place to point stuff like that out, huh? Besides, the captain always has a reason for doing things. Ah, well. It should be fun seeing Logan chopping wood. I wonder if he's still smoking those cheap-ass cigars. Personal Log, Representative Robert Kelly. The bureaucrats have finally come to their senses and commissioned Project Wide Awake, a covert operation designed to deal with the mutant menace that's growing within our borders. And although I had to call in every political favor owed me, I was able to convince them to appoint me the head of the project. Now we can move forward with what should have been a priority ten years ago. The protection of the human race. Personal Log, Representative Robert Kelly. In putting the team together for Project Wide Awake, I've located a very promising young scientist named Bolivar Trask. His graduate studies yielded a blood test that identifies mutant genetics. I can only hope Dr. Trask will join the team and continue his research into mutant detection. Personal Log, Representative Robert Kelly. I've just signed a contract with Shaw Industries. They are now primary suppliers of equipment to our project. Sebastian Shaw, the owner of the company, seems like a very trustworthy individual. I think I can count on him to keep our dealings a secret from the American public. Personal Log, Representative Robert Kelly. I absolutely despise meeting with Colonel Stryker. The Jackal controls my supply of test subjects and isn't afraid to let me know it. This time I had to bribe him with information on the location of a school of mutants in New York State. I've been looking into the creation of my own Team X, so I don't have to rely on Stryker. The day that happens, I'm going to inform him personally, just to watch the smile fade from his smug face. Personal Log Bolivar Trask. I must say, I was very reluctant to accept Senator Kelly's invitation to join Project Wide Awake. He's an outspoken opponent of mutants, and I have nothing against them. In fact, I find them quite fascinating. But how could I decline the chance to work with the best and brightest minds in genetics? Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. Senator Kelly stopped by the lab today to regale me with another of his many speeches about the mutant menace. I do respect him, but it was all I could do not to laugh. Mutants and humans should have no problem living together peacefully. We just need to understand them. And that's what I'm striving for in my work. Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. My work on detection of the mutant gene is advancing even faster than I had hoped. I've now developed a device that can scan blood simply by placing it in contact with skin. While creating this technology, I've begun to realize that mutants are a threat, but only to themselves when their powers first activate. And this is where I hope mutant detection will have the greatest benefit. If we can find mutants before they become active, we can help them prepare. Personal Log, 
Bolivar Trask. Now that I've spent a great deal of time with mutants, I'm beginning to see that Senator Kelly's legislation is really just common sense. There are mutants with incredible powers. They should be registered, just like any weapon should. It's really just making the best of a bad situation. Personally, I'd rest much easier if I knew there aren't any unknown mutants wandering around with the ability to level a city block. Personal log, Bolivar Trask. There was an incident in the lab this morning. A mutant attacked Dr. Schilder. Now he's in intensive care with third degree burns over half of his body. Perhaps we should start sedating test subjects to prevent this from happening again. Personal log, Bolivar Trask. Senator Kelly was furious at last week's attack on Dr. Schilder. He was livid, proclaiming that all mutants should be exterminated. But I refuse to subscribe to this murderous ideology. All we need to do is study them and determine how to help them control their powers. Or for those who refuse to work within the system, learn how to control their powers for them. Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. I wish it hadn't come to this, but from now on, all test subjects are to be heavily sedated. Injuries have been occurring far too often at the lab. I don't understand it. Don't the mutants realize we're trying to help them? Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. I finally developed a way to detect mutant genes from a distance of five feet. I hope this will be of help to law enforcement and military personnel in the near future. Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. Several test subjects banded together last night and left the facility without authorization. Two innocent people died and six others were injured. I have tried to keep an open mind towards mutants, to treat them as equals, but I don't know if that's wise anymore. Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. An Omega-level test subject woke up during experimentation today. Twenty-three close friends and colleagues died in the radiation blast. I personally terminated the offending mutant. We cannot allow this to ever happen again. Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. After some very deep soul searching, I find I must agree with Senator Kelly. Mutants will never be able to coexist with humans. They're prideful and violent. They see themselves as the next step in evolution. It's only logical that once their numbers are large enough, they'll exterminate us. Therefore, I say we strike first and make sure not one of them is left alive. Personal Log, Bolivar Trask. I've done it. I've developed a machine that's not only capable of detecting mutants, but it can also terminate them. It's still only in its initial phase of planning, but once they are in full production, Sentinels will have no trouble in combating the mutant menace. Meeting recording. Project Wide Awake Executive Chamber. Congressman Kelly, I don't see how we intend on keeping this a secret. Project Wide Awake is far too expensive to hide from the taxpayers for long. I agree completely. At some point it would become public, and then we would lose the element of surprise. Therefore, I propose we hide it in plain sight. I beg your pardon? Since one of our primary studies deals in robotics, then let's make that the face of Project Wide Awake. We'll call it StarCorp, and say the government is developing mechanical devices that will make life better and safer for everyone. Which, ultimately, we are. Meeting recording. Project Wide Awake Executive Chamber. My friends, it must be obvious that simply studying mutants is not enough. Project Wide Awake must be proactive. We have to understand how to protect ourselves from them. And how do you propose we do that, Representative Kelly? We need to study test subjects to find ways to counter their powers. Are you suggesting we experiment on mutants? Only a few. The bare minimum needed. Look, I find the idea as appalling as you do. But these are hard times, and hard decisions must be made. Meeting recording. Project Wide Awake Executive Chamber. Representative Kelly, it's recently come to the committee's attention that Project Wide Awake has been developing sentinels. What exactly are these? Think of them as robotic peacekeepers. They are being designed to counter almost any mutant power. So they're meant purely as a defensive system? Oh, most definitely. They would only be deployed in the event of mutant riots. 
Meeting recording. Project Wide Awake Executive Chamber. I would like to welcome the new members of the Project Wide Awake Committee. I know that we are of one mind now, and that we will accomplish great things. Thank you, Representative Kelly. We look forward to following your lead in protecting mankind from the mutant menace. And with that, let me introduce the Sentinel Mark I. It is the single most powerful fighting weapon known to mankind. I intend on building an army of these, with the explicit directive to exterminate every living mutant. An excellent idea, sir. You have the committee's full backing. 